What is going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 100 of the Yamcast. Triple digits. Triple digits. This is it. It's been 100. a long road. It's been a very long road. Yeah. Um, and today's a bit of news. We have two from CF Moto. Um, pretty. Cr- I think one of them is like really crazy, and then the other is like, oh, that's a cute little you know thing. Um, so we'll kind of talk about that a little bit. One I'm more excited about than the other. I know which one you're really excited about. Which one? We'll talk about okay. it later. Uh, we're also going to be discussing what's going on with us personally because we've had some changes in the stable we have some um, and some updates in the stable and some fun stuff. The topic of discussion for today's Yamcast is going to be a gear debate. We're going to talk about wearing our gear, what we wear, how it's changed over time, maybe what we don't wear, how we wear it in different applications. Just a general discussion on motorcycle gear. And then at the end of the show, we're doing something different. We're doing a call-in. So for those of you watching on stream... We're going to drop a phone number later on the show. Call us in. We'll chat with you. Ask us anything you want. It'll be hopefully fun uh, or weird. I don't know. Whatever you want to do, up to you. So uh, without further ado, let's get on with the show. Alrighty, Brandon. We are starting off with the what's going on with me and you. And let's start off with you because you've had a new addition to the family. I have. I have. I got a brand new 2023 KTM Super Duke R Evo. Well, so just wait, it's another twelve ninety, right? Super Duke twelve ninety. Oh, one okay, okay, okay. motor, and I love it. Yeah, I love it. So I've had that is... thing for less than a week now, and I've put almost eight hundred miles on it. As one does. Yes. That's the way to do it. Uh, only way to do it. First of all, congratulations. That's thank an awesome you. motorcycle. Thank you, thank you. It's your first. Is this the first bike you've bought? Basically, brand new. Like the uh, you've never Street done that before. Street bike, yes. I've uh, the last bike I bought brand new was. The dirt bike, KTM. Dirt oh bike yeah, yeah, yeah. You. Yeah. Um, I had a used bike before that, but otherwise, this is my second ever brand new motorcycle and your first I street bike one and first street bike. That is so crazy. Yep. At the age of how old are you? Twenty seven. Twenty seven years. Twenty seven. After twenty years of racing, mm-hmm. you finally have a street bike. <laughs> I have a street bike. <laughs> of all of those years and all of that experience, I now have a street bike. How does it feel? It's actually fun. I enjoy it. I. When I want to just cruise, I just turn the cruise control on and turn my mind off and let the miles tick away. Yeah. But when I want to have fun, boy, <laughs> do, do I. <laughs> I have some fun. So I guess coming from your racing background, you're now riding on the street more. You started riding the street more when you got involved with the channel uh, here at Yami Noob, but then you kind of got the bug. How are you approaching uh, street riding versus the track stuff? And Because you obviously have so much experience riding motorcycles, but you got to take it differently, right? Yeah, it's it's... It's different. So my mentally, it's actually been quite adjustment. I feel like a new, a noob, if you will. Yeah. Um, because I didn't think I would be the the typical street squid, and yet, literally yesterday, you're doing some. I was stuff. doing some street squid. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing. There's always the devil on your shoulder. It is, and especially with a bike like that, dude. Oh, it it's much louder than the <laughs> than it should be. <laughs> but no, it's. I think I'm a bit more tame than I would have been back then but yeah i still kind of want to go through that stupid phase if you will yeah i think approaching a bike like that at the age of 27 versus 21 yeah huge difference big big difference huge difference mm-hmm. um, i went into it with a respect of the motorcycle already yeah because it had a reputation if i went into it when i was 20 21 or even when i got my motorcycle license at 17 yeah Oh, I would not. I, would, I probably wouldn't be alive. Yeah, there's there's lots of bikes I've ridden, like the Turbo Busa, the H2, the V4R. Where I'm like, man, if I if I was a younger man, <laughs> this would be a problem. Like, It'd be a big just, big problem. Just don't know how to control yourself. I used to have a BMW S1000 Double R, but you had it for like a day. I had right? it for like a week, but yeah, I rode yeah. it once, and I was like, Mm-mm. nope. <laughs> so yeah, I got rid of that, but. Yeah. Now that I'm re-approaching the class, if you will, 1,000 class, yeah. it's actually pretty fun. So what are your plans with the bike? Tons of stuff. I want to go cross-country riding on it. Um, I obviously daily it already. I've already put 800 miles on it, and uh, I want to take it to the track at some point. Yeah. That, I want to ride it to the track and then just smoke some people on it, just because oh, why not? I was telling you, you should bring it with your paper plates and your tail. Every, it's like a bone <laughs> stock bike. And just give a little doot doot with the horn every time you pass somebody. 
Or just like you're trying to pass somebody, just dude, dude, just get out of the way. You See, know, if I did that, put your you, signal on. If I did that and you were there, you'd be so pissed if I did that. To you. I would. Like, that would be, you, that'd be so <laughs> funny. Like I would love that. Be so. Funny. I'd love for you to pass you just with the blinkers on and give like a little one like. Or this, just back you know? it in in front of you, just blinkers on. Yeah. <laughs> just like. All right. Just put your hazards on. You're just like, oh shit, sorry. You know. <laughs> didn't mean. I come out of court. Oh, didn't, didn't mean to do that. Sorry, man. Yeah. That would be funny. That would be great. That would be yeah. Good time. So um, we're gonna have a video revealing that bike mm-hmm. uh, a little bit later in October. Uh, we're gonna do a pretty fun video with that uh and then maybe we'll make some other videos with it. we don't know yet because it's your personal bike so we don't have to make videos with it but i think it's cool to feature because yeah. it's like hey we got a in the pantheon of yami noob now there's a super duke just hanging around so just that's always fun to just the duke is there yeah it makes me really want to bring back my turbo booster because i'm like i want now you have to have something i gotta because like i've got my bikes but half of them are just like for racetrack use uh-huh. and then i got the scrambler that's about it like that's all i have right now i yeah. don't have like a proper street fast bike which I miss. I really miss having the turbo boost. Just put it in the shop. I know. You I gotta, have a trailer. You I got gotta a truck. go. I gotta go call somebody and figure out who's gonna fucking fix it and how they're gonna <laughs> fix it. It's a whole thing. So I gotta figure that out. Um, anything else up with you, Brandon? Besides well, actually, the obvious, well, the Super Duke. The Super Duke, but I mean, most people don't know me, but I've got a wife, kid, <laughs> growing kid. <laughs> hey, we're not that person, all right? I'm Jesus not just Christ. Saying, but well, otherwise, you know. I mean, I start working here, obviously. Um, yeah. Just full time, full officially, time. which is cool. Other than that, we're just taking it one day at a time. We're just right. having fun, riding motorcycles. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. What's going uh, on with you? Well, as I showed you, uh, I think it was yeah yesterday. I wrapped it up. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a full refresh, and I don't want to call it rebuild, but like a, a complete tear down and refresh of my Daytona, mm-hmm. the bike you love so much. Um, <laughs> I wanted to repaint the fairings because I crashed it back in 21 and I never got around to fixing it. And it just looked bad. And then I there was a lot of maintenance that I needed to do. The brake pads, do I pull them out? There was <laughs> nothing. Pencil thing? It, yeah. No, there was nothing. <laughs> it was just the, the backing material. That was it. And I was like, I'm braking on just metal nothing. to metal. Just yeah. nothing. Yeah. So I did that. I have, the, I have all the fluids, the valves, which I just, I want to take a moment. I did it all myself, guys. It feels really good. <laughs> I felt like a, finally, for once in my life, I felt like a somewhat... Thank you. Finally, once in my life, <laughs> I felt like a somewhat capable motorcycle mechanic. Uh, I had my service manual. I took my time with everything. I did the valves. I put it all back together. And when I started it up, it worked. And I was like, wow, I'm a genius. This is so cool. It's almost as if the people that built the thing made a book yeah, to follow. <laughs> yeah. But I'd never done that before. I'd never oh, really? done it so meticulously with the book and did it all that way. So we'll put up some photos here now. It's like this cool new blue livery. And the blue, as I mentioned to you, mm-hmm. is actually a Porsche paint code that comes from them. It's called a Mexico blue. It's this electric, super like neon blue. And the the valve stem caps, I put little Porsche valve stem caps on there uh, because <laughs> because why not? Um, and speaking of the Porsche, I guess I can, I can tell the people at, at home. I mean, I've not, I've not really told anybody and not, that's I've not posted it publicly. It's your news. Yeah. Uh, I picked up uh, a new four wheeled friend in my garage. I, I'm the, now the proud owner of a 991 generation Porsche 911, which sounds amazing to say because I've wanted one for 12 years now. Uh, it's kind of like you with the Aston Martins. There's just certain vehicles that you mm-hmm. grow up seeing. And you're just like, man, one day, one yeah. day, one day. And this one came along. It's a seven speed manual. Um, it's white. It's got the Carrera S wheels. And it's just, it's such a, it's such a different thing to enjoy it's and to, to use. It's, it's, nice a, it's a fun toy. Yeah. yeah. I've got the truck that I, you know, I use for daily shit and the bikes for daily shit, but you know, it's fun to have a fun four wheel toy. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah, I completely agree. And even you who think it's a, it's an overgrown Volkswagen bug because yep. I can't have nice things without you saying something <laughs> stupid about it. <laughs> Notice that I didn't say anything bad about your Super Duke. I'm, I'm a respectful person. Because you, could you le- actually like the you Super could learn, Duke. <laughs> I don't like it that much. You could learn something from me. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Like, hey, bug bar. boy. <laughs> hey, you like you like wasps? <laughs> I came in, I came in the other day, I was like, who put the f***ing bug next to my car, man? Yeah, I was like, funny, <laughs> funny, yeah. So, oh God. yeah, you could learn some respect, you know, some 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 respect. I want to take a flashback real quick <laughs> to when I first met you and you're riding the Daytona. Uh-huh. And we finally got you out to the races. How much shit did I give you, you for no reason? You gave me so much shit that I had to pull you aside the next day. I was like, you need to stop. I was like, I know you're just like being yeah. funny, but I was like, but I'm, I literally, I'm really bothered, really annoyed, like <laughs> cut it out. And I don't do that hardly ever, uh-uh. but yeah. So that, that's, the and then you realize it's just everyone at the track. You're like, I hate all of yeah. you. 
<laughs> and now I, now I do it to everybody. Yeah, it's welcome. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. It's fun. Awesome toxic environment <laughs> at CMRA. <laughs> So that's what's going on with us. But now we'll roll into the uh, other bit of news here. So, Brandon, which one do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about these new sport bikes from CF Moto or the Papio? I think the sport bikes are very interesting. I'm more excited about the Papio. I want to see the Papio. Well, we're talking about the sport bikes first. Well, you know uh, what? That's what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> CF Moto is freaking out. <laughs> I just disregard what you say completely. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Uh, th dude, this news came out of nowhere. Um, so CF Moto is working on a 675 cc triple cylinder sport bike and a 500 cc four cylinder sport bike. What? <laughs> I, <laughs> this is like the most exciting thing to happen in like five years in motorcycling. I get what the hell it, is this going is just on? a random manufacturer that is apparently making everything. That's what I'm saying. It's become to the point where it's impossible to ignore CF Moto. You cannot ignore them anymore. The thing that I don't understand, I so I do understand the 500 cc four stroke because they want to like, compete against the ZX four, whatever. Yeah, but the six seven five triple, I don't. It looks cool. We got like CBR esque vibes from that thing. Yeah, I mean it. It, it looks, looks like looks the real deal. Cool. I, I'm looking at the swing arm, the subframe. Everything looks proper. The ergos look correct. But I, of motors that I would put in a 600 hey, class bike. Check, check it out. Brake ducts. Look at that. I'm sold. All right. You I'm swapping. Like you know, I can buy brake ducts for my Super Duke? Can you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the, of, of all the motors they could have picked to put in a 600cc class bike, they picked arguably the slowest one. <laughs> arguably. It is strange, right? I don't because, know why. Um, so we're going to back this out a little bit. Nowadays in this class, they call it the Super Sport Next Generation, mm -hmm. right? Moto America and World Super Sport have been doing this where it's like it's like the most hodgepodge category ever. You've got the Ducati V2 Panigale, a 955cc twin. Mm -hmm. You've got the MV Agusta 800 three cylinders. You've got the Triumph 765s. You have the Cowie 636. And you have the R6 at 600cc. And the Jixxer 750. And the Jixxer 750s. So it's just like the the redheaded stepchild of it's racing. Just a middle class. It's just bike. a middle. But class. But if that was the case, why would they not up the displacement to fit in the class? That's bike? what I'm thinking. Yeah. So I I don't think this it's, is going to be a race bike. It's not a homologation bike. I don't think. I, if they're making these things to look like proper machines, I would have to say they are. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think anybody's gonna try to race this. I don't see why they would. Because like you said, 685 is not the most competitive displacement or setup for that category. How is it as a street motor, though? It's nice. It's linear and torquey. And that's what I've always told you because you're always like, it's not competitive in 600s. I'm like, it doesn't need to be. It's a fun sport bike and it's a great track bike and it handles beautifully. It's got a great sound and it's linear power. It's nice. It's a nice thing to, to own and ride. So, I mean, I guess that's the idea here. And they're probably chasing that market of like track day bro. Or street bike, I mean, bro. Guess, it's not a race bike. So, as we scroll down here, we will see... Because I, I did peek at this a little bit. They're rumored to also make not only the 675 triple, the, the 500cc four-cylinder. Uh, four they're also rumored to be, or confirmed to be rumored at the bottom of the article. It says that they're uh, confirmations of them working on the 1000 V4. Yes, and rumors of them making a GP bike. Yes. So I counter the, I don't think anyone's going to race this, because I think they're purposely doing this so people race them. But it could be just like Triumph's strategy of they supply engines in Moto2 and they build race bikes, but they'll sell you a Street Triple RS. I think this is a road-going variant of the kind of racing stuff they're going to do. Because so, I think the V4, they might try to homologate it, and it's going to be hilarious seeing somebody in club... Because you know it's only going to be club racers. Nobody in Moto America is going to be like, so, yeah, I'll take a punt on a Chinese bike. So Fuck it. I'll ask this question, then. If just they're not going to do that, and they're not homologating it or whatever, why would you put brake ducts on your street bike? Why are there winglets on the CF Moto 450 SS? It sells. I think that I think it's cool. People, people, I get, yeah, right? Like, why does yeah, a dude? Why does a that. fifty horsepower bike need downforce at one hundred and twenty miles per it's hour? So fast, bro. <laughs> it's so, so fast. fast. It's so goddamn fast. So fast. It's so fast. Um, 
so there's this, and then like we said, there's also the that, the freaking that. that the, the, <laughs> hey, oh, what? it has brake ducts. <laughs> That's what did I tell you? Brake ducts are the new winglets. Oh Remember in 2017, god. everything had winglets, and people were like, "Oh my god, no, I don't want this." And now it's normal, and people don't even think about them anymore. Brake ducts are the next winglets, bro. This is the new trend. You got to keep up around here, Brandon. You oh got to kind of make sure you're on the trends here. Uh, but it's it's like these two bikes are the answer to the <laughs> questions that nobody had. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? like, That's the problem. What the heck? That's the problem. It's I don't so strange. Understand it. I feel like now with the ZX4 and this bike. I think like Honda and Yamaha will be like, wait, what? We're we're doing like we have to do this. We have now? to do we this. To yeah, do like this is a, this is a category. I didn't want to do this. I want to do this. <laughs> I don't know. I man. feel like Yamaha would just make the R6 motor smaller and just chuck it into like an MT03 or something. Be like, It'd be the easiest for them. Just like, yeah, and they'd win. Because, because, yeah, some, yeah, yeah it's all, <laughs> somehow win. it's the best one. Yeah, um, but yeah, 500 cc four cylinder bike. Again, I, I think what CF Moto is doing here is like they're they're locating these like really slim little niches that they can just slot in and be like, well, nobody's doing that with this bike. I'm just going to slot in here and, um, you know, try to sell in this market. Yeah. That's my idea here. I don't know. I don't, again, it's hard. You can't, we can't ignore them anymore. We you can't ignore that. Them. But I, I don't understand the purpose. Like, because most people, I, it's think, just street bikes, bro. That's all it is. It's just like the rules have been torn up. This is what I'm saying. Like we're still living in the paradigm of like 300, 600, and thousands. That does not exist anymore. Right now, it's like you can do whatever the hell you want in this middle category. That's it. That's it. From 600 to from 500. From 500. No, because even those don't complete with a middleweight class. Now you have a middleweight and a lightweight class. That's okay, so what it's kind of becoming. That's what I'm saying. Like I think the twins are sevens. Those things. This I think is they're going to be phased out because if they're going to those four well, cylinder five hundreds, so. no way the R seven is going to be phased out. The twins aren't going to get phased. They're still going to sell the twins. But that's what I'm saying. Like there's going to be a future. Like three years from now, you walk into a dealership that sells CF Moto, you're going to have. 500 cc four cylinder bikes, 65 cc sport bikes, V4 super bikes, 700 cc twins, and 450 cc beginner bike twins. That is a crazy lineup. But like I told you, the rules have been torn up. I don't think anything matters anymore. But it made it so much more difficult to people for people to understand what kind of bikes they would be looking for. Beginners, it's now hard to figure it out. Because you have so many different displacements and so many different cylinder sizes and amounts of cylinders, it becomes the lines become very blurred. Let me tell you something. I guess they let kind me, of let want. me tell you something, Brandon. Talk about lines being blurred, right? Oh gosh, that's the way the world is going. Everything's getting more blurry, right? Hmm? Men, you want to specify? Men, women. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of in betweens now, right? I'm being facetious, but like. We are living in this kind of like gray area world. We're not, there's, there's no, like I was telling you, we're living in the past of like, there are 600s and thousands. No, there's not. There's everything and anything in between. If you want a 500 CC four sill, go for it. I don't know why you'd want that. Uh -uh. I, I still don't know why you'd want a ZX4, but there are so, I mean, dude, but there's so many comments of people being like, I want this bike. I mean, I want no, this. that's fair because I did just have to answer the question for a guy in our discord that asked me my entire racing history, which I didn't have time to type out. So I just told him the bikes that I raced in roughly which years. And back in my day, it was normal to go from a Ninja 250 to a 600. It was normal. So and I that's guess a big leap. It's a big leap. A I did that leap when I was 13. Yeah. But. I get it. I'm. Uh, we may be old fashioned. We may we be getting left behind. I think we are. I. I just. I can't. At the fully... right age of twenty seven and thirty, we're 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 done, dude. Wow, just, That's it. Get out of here. Yeah. Man. I mean, Keith, he's a fossil. <laughs> you know, like we're if we're old, he's fucking. <laughs> I love routing him up, but I love getting him routed up. But you just it's, clip it's, that moment for it's, him. It's hard to understand. For me, at least, and I guess in my old ways to wrap my head around the purpose of these. It is difficult for me to think of it, too. But like I said, I think they're just figuring out that the rules don't matter anymore. You don't have to stick within this like hierarchy that we've arbitrarily established. Because you look back in other decades, you had the ZX-9, the ZX-7. There were all these like oddball displacement bikes that didn't really fit anywhere. Yeah, what is five it? Five cylinder bikes, six cylinder bikes. Yeah, I mean, you se had 750s were like the top dog for like the Jixxer 750. That was like your 
fucking King Dick motorcycle for the longest time. And then that? it became the Jixxer Thou, man. Yeah. K5 Jixxer, best Jixxer out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. But, I mean, if you look back, there were so many cool bikes. So many. Like, you had a V5 from Honda. Like, yeah. there was such cool machines out. Mm-hmm. The, the the thing is that we're not going back to making those crazy things. We're just no, no, no. Making random cylinder counts and like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want a five hundred cc four or one cylinder? How many how many cylinders yeah. do you want? Because you do have a CBR five hundred, which is a single cylinder, isn't it? The five hundred is the twin. twin. This is okay, right? But you can but you can get a a big single cylinder. I mean, it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, but that's cool. I think it's cool I, that you can you can pick uh, and choose whatever you want. Like, I would think I would be cooler. bored if I lived in a world where every manufacturer is making the same bike but just with different colors i think it'd be a lot cooler if because they are making the same bikes with different colors now i mean that's what cf photo's doing is what do you mean you got the 675 triple i mean it's the same it's gonna be like the daytona oh you know i'm gonna but have to get one i, know <laughs> like, I, have, I, know to, I have to compare i know it. you will but i think it'd be cooler if manufacturers were not just doing this but instead of making a 675 triple do something weird with the triple make make it a v triple or some shit like that <laughs> I don't know. Make the 500 a V4. I mean, something like that. That's now, cool now stuff. Now a 500 cc V4. That's cool stuff. That's this really cool. This is just weird. <laughs> this is just weird. Make some cool stuff. I if you made a 500 cc uh, V4, yeah. we would be all over that. Like the old uh, Honda uh, VFR 400s, the RVF 400s. Yeah, Those yeah. are cool. Those are really Those cool. Those are sick but, bikes. But yeah, they don't they don't make them anymore. You know, and they have to. I guess make this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I want to get one of these just so I can make a video being like, the goddamn Chinese Daytona. I want to say that so bad on camera. <laughs> I want to talk about hey, anytime we Chinese Daytona. Motor, you can have that. Anytime. Yeah. Then Chinese. Damn Chinese Daytonas. <laughs> that would be so funny. You can do it with every video that we have a CF yes. Moto in. You can do that. That's true. Um, so yeah, that's CF Moto's new sport bikes. I, I, again, answering questions that nobody <laughs> asked. Yeah, um, nobody, nobody wanted this. But I think it's I think it's interesting. Um, I think it's interesting that they're they're putting new stuff out on the market. Ostensibly, these are all, these are all using different <laughs> frames. Like, what are these bikes? You know, I still think because I heard a rumor that the 450 SS was a bat it was like a what's the word a botched ktm parallel twin they were gonna make like that was supposed to be a ktm bike and then they were like we'll just make a cf moto bike that's what i heard nobody knows for sure maybe these maybe this is a botched ktm sport bike and they're like fuck it why is that to be ktm ktm don't make triples (laughs) no they don't but cf moto's in bed with ktm they do a bunch of stuff with them yeah so at and and like and you you saw the article they're partnering with yamaha Yamaha, doing stuff like they're doing maybe 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 this maybe maybe this is an r5 that never came out i don't know maybe they partnered with triumph and we just don't know about it and that's where they got the 675 i'll tell you what if they did as soon as i see this in person i'll I'll be able to tell you if this is a triumph engine immediately dang chinese (laughs) chinese daytona yeah so yeah we will obviously keep up to date on this. I think, honestly, like we said, CF Moto is getting impossible to ignore. And the further we go into the future, I think the more we're going to have to talk about these bikes, get these bikes, ride these bikes, yep. give away these bikes, because they have a ton of hype around them. They do. Um, we've seen that every time we make videos about CF Moto, we made that one about the the Chinese V4 CF Moto Superbike. Mm-hmm. That was like 400,000 views. Like People are really interested in this. Um, and, we, and we didn't hate the CF Moto 4. No, it's a, it's a good bike. It. It's a really good bike. Yeah. It's a, it's. It's it did a, not dethrone the Ninja. It's not as good as Ninja 400. Yeah. I have to say that. I have to, I have to put that out there. Mm-hmm. But it's a good bike. It's yeah. still a good bike, yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on to the next one. This is what I'm excited about. This is really cool. Look at this thing. The CF Moto Papio is coming out with a new variant, this Sport Mod. Look at this. That's cool, dude. That's crazy. I, you've been thinking about shop bike? <laughs> shop bike. I love that it's <laughs> like, uh, you know what it looks like to me? It looks like a... Uh, a 1984 Jixxer 750 with an autoimmune disease. Mm-hmm. And I can't take credit for that joke. One of our script writers used that joke in one of our other videos, but I thought <laughs> it was so funny that I, I wanted to start saying it. Because um, it looks like a shrunken down version of a Jixxer 750, does it not? Mm-hmm. An old an one? Old one, yeah. It's it has just like a cafe style tail. Look at this thing. <laughs> what the heck? 
Tell me you don't want that thing. So, yeah, look at this. The article says it looks like an 80s endurance racer. Yeah, I, this is so cool. They need to make this in a bigger version. I also love they have like the, the text here yeah. is kind of futuristic and weird looking. I, I love how the exhaust comes out underneath the yes. trail. Yes. I love that. I want to see if we can get a. <laughs> I a think they view have a backward shot of it. Yeah, this is the trail one with the, the dual headlights. Tell me you don't up. want that. I want that cafe. Oh, this style. dash is cool. Yeah. They need to make this in a bigger version. This is no, really cool. That's the perfect size. <laughs> Just a little that is baby, amazing little baby guy. Yeah, I'll take um, that to work. I'll bring look, it look at this. This guy's like, I'm having the time of my life. Exactly. On my 12 inch wheel <laughs> off road. <laughs> look at that. Look at that side profile. Tell me that's not cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, but again, answering questions nobody had. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I mean, this is kind of the CF Moto thing now, where it's like, who the hell wanted like an 80s endurance yeah. racer Grom? But I- I'm I'm here for it. It's really cool. <laughs> I like how the headlights light up. They look cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Um, so yeah, you want one of these as a shop bike? I think it'd be yeah. kind of fun. That'd be super fun. I think Send it, would get, go out on it would get a lot of looks, I think. Oh, yeah. A lot of Absolutely. comments. Like, what the heck is that We have to thing? make a video about it first. Yeah, we get, for sure. Oh, we get two of them. And we yeah. make a video. There yeah, we go. We get two they have like cafe proper racer forks. Yeah, like yeah, they have upside fork. down fork. It's, <laughs> it's really silly. <laughs> the, okay. the, look at that tried and true, though, a little air cooled. I love how they have passenger pegs as if, yes. can, as if it can handle it. <laughs> and those are like hard mounted on there. You know that. It's like you want to get those off, you got to chop them off, baby. Yeah. This is I hilarious. Um, I don't think it features any mechanical updates over the mm-hmm. existing Papio. But I think it's the same as Motor, but I love the way it looks. Yeah. This it is, says it has ABS. Yeah. Why? That is so <laughs> unnecessary. It's very unnecessary to have ABS, but they all come with it nowadays. The Grom has an ABS version. Um, I don't know why. The, yeah, they just... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it's there. I imagine like these one day, because they don't know what else to put traction control in. Like, here's, here's, we have... But we put wheelie control in, by Aprilia, the way. Aprilia APRC on this. <laughs> You're like, <"We're>, what? <laughs> In maps and stuff like yeah, that, engine modes and, and modes. stuff. <laughs> the trail one's cool. I like the high fender on here. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what kind of trail or anything you could do with it, but you know, it's an interesting little bike. And look, whatever gets more people involved with motorcycles, I'm all about it. You know, these are going to be cheap as hell, super fun, super it's easy. Probably like three, four grand uh, yeah. at most, four grand at most. Um, so I think that's super cool. I'm, I'm glad CF Moto's doing stuff like this. And they're really carving out their own identity, right? Like, that's the thing for a while there. It's kind of like, well, what is a CF Moto? Like, what kind of bikes do they make? You know, like we were talking about before. Pretty cool looking with these, with these sport bikes, with these things, with this, with the 450 SS. You know, they're they're really doing something. Um, and again, people won't shut the hell up about them. So yeah, they got to be sure. doing something it's, right. Uh, they're, it's becoming very loud. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Um, Brandon, anything else to say on the Pappy before we wrap up the news here? No, but I want one. Yeah. I want one. That's Definitely want it. one. All right, folks, we're now going to move on to the main discussion point of this podcast, and it's going to be talking about gear. Let's get into it. All right, folks, welcome to the main discussion topic of the Yamcast. Brandon, we are talking about gear today. Uh, I thought this was a fun topic just because we have a lot of beginner riders on mm-hmm. the channel. We wanted to talk about gear. The gear that you and I wear have changed over time. Yes. A little bit. Yes. Um, why don't you talk me through, because obviously you come from a racing background, uh, you wore one-piece suits most of the time. Most of the time. When did you start kind of riding more on street, and what did you start wearing when you were riding more on street? So, actually, I can back it up even further to where I was riding on the track. One of the first times my parents trusted me to pack my own gear, uh, I forgot it. I had the bag. I didn't have the gear. Um, so, we had to go to Walmart, and we got a life vest, um, a long jacket, some dirt bike boots that we found at Walmart and some knee pads like from a skateboard and I got to race with that. Uh what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Road race? Uh-huh. On a TTR90. They let you do that? Yeah. It was a different time. It was a different time. That's crazy. It was approved. Um, <laughs> I didn't crash, but <laughs> that's, it was that's a one-time actual, thing. That's actually crazy. I didn't <laughs> know about the story. <laughs> you can ask my How dad about How old were you? <sighs> Like eight or nine or something? Yeah, like eight maybe. Yeah. It was one of the very first times my parents trusted That's me to super pack funny my though. Own stuff. Pack your stuff, you just completely forget. Yeah, I brought my helmet and my That's, just, yeah. and the bag, but none of the gear that was supposed to be in the bag. Wow, no gloves, no suit, no boots, not just helmet. Mm-hmm. So that's where it started for you. That's where your squidding started. Those were my squidding days. It was the one and only time I was allowed to do it when I was a kid. And then I got yeah. ferociously yelled at. But back to your question on the street. Um, when I started riding street, it was 
shoes, pants, uh, helmet, gloves, and a jacket. That was about it. The things that we definitely buy were the jacket, the gloves, and the helmet. I just yeah. used my race helmet though. So then, pants and shoes are just street pants and shoes. Yeah, yeah. That was the bare minimum that my parents, because I was living with my parents at the time, were. Yeah. All right now you can go out. Otherwise, yeah. it was it was mainly just to. If you crashed on the road, you're probably not ending up so well anyways. So just minimize the road rash is yeah. basically the theory behind that. So that that was basically what we did. It's not the same with what I do right now. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm wearing pants with pads in them. Uh-huh. Proper Sli- shoes. Slide resistant pants, I might add. Also yep. the revs you have, yeah. And the uh, ankle protection mm-hmm. shoes, um, jacket, gloves, and helmet. Do I you- still prefer... Preferably, I don't know about you. Preferably, uh, I prefer leather jackets over cloth jackets. I do too, but it's just so damn it's, hot. Yeah, we live in Texas. I, I get it. I have we to live wear in textile. Texas. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. It's so hot, but when it becomes cooler, I'd probably end up getting that. Yeah. Just because I feel it feels better. Yeah, I feel like I'm being hugged a bit more. Yeah, it's instead a little... of getting stuck because the cloth, the cloth ones you do kind of get stuck with that liner. But yeah, uh, leather ones, it just you're being hugged. Do you still? Uh, find yourself ever riding maybe you don't wear all of your gear yes yeah. i know there was uh when i did the my ride on the h2 uh i left with the intention of just riding pretty much around the block so i was never gonna do anything stupid it was just meh you know type, type thing i then ended up full squid moding <laughs> and doing everything i shouldn't do uh uh undisclosed speeds with my tennis shoes um yeah not not greatest looking back on it um i try not to do that yeah but it still does happen if i if i don't have the intention of doing something like if i'm just going down to the store or something like that or you know the gas station coming back i probably won't put my full riding gear on it'll probably just be the jacket gloves and helmet yeah but those are the bare minimum necessities that i'll always do I'll always have pants on just because I only wear pants anyways. Yeah. So. I've never seen you in shorts. <clears throat> yeah. I think ever the time I've known you. Some yeah. pale legs down there. <laughs> I never want to see him. There's Don't ever show him. Paleness. <laughs> you know, what's funny is the only time I find myself not wearing most, if not all of my gear, and this is a bad habit I have, is like if I if I have a bike that I'm working on, I just need to test it. I mm-hmm. just need to like start it up or something. I have a really bad habit of like, I will go up and down the street, just no gear at all. And I'll, like literally yeah. as I was finishing my Daytona, I went up and down the street. I was wearing shorts and like no shirt, yep. sandals, like nothing. Just like I just went up and down the block. And my wife gets on to me. She's like, "You can always have uh, a TBI, a traumatic brain injury. Mm-hmm. Like you need to like if you jump on a motorcycle, helmet must go on." And so from now on, I'm like, she has a point. Like I'll go shirtless, but I will need to be wearing a helmet. You know, because um, I just you know it's funny. I it, it feels weird to me to go out with no gear it feels really weird to jump on a bike if i'm actually going to go for a ride yeah not not up and down the block like if i'm testing a bike or whatever it feels really weird to not wear a jacket or anything else like i know missing something i know a lot of guys like they'll ride a scooter and just like oh it's a scooter like half helmet t-shirt nothing i'm like yeah but a guy earlier today was oh my god nothing just he had pants on he had pants he was wearing a wife beater and that was about it yeah and he was enjoying i mean he was enjoying life don't get me wrong he was enjoying life (laughs) but if something happens yeah he's about to not enjoy life my thing is is i've caught a pebble in the arm dude it hurts that hurts dude i've hit a grasshopper with my knuckles here i'm small i was like ow i'm small it hurts (laughs) i don't like it i need a nice layer of bubble wrap yeah that's all i need it feels better (laughs) One thing I've started wearing, and you've seen me wearing it, is my airbag vest. Uh, that's been a new See, thing that I've been starting to wear, and I'm really happy with it, honestly. And I'm glad you brought that up, because that is still, I guess I'm stuck in my old way. So I can actually tell you, back in 2010, actually. <clears throat> 13 years ago. Yeah, was actually the first time I put a chest protector on. Wow. Before then, mm-mm. It was just back protecting when I was racing. You didn't like the way it felt? Is that why? No, it just just didn't do it. it. And all of a sudden, now it was a thing. And I was like, now it's weird. I don't want to wear it. All Yeah. Now I'm always wearing it. But now the airbag to me is like, no. Yeah. For me, that's a leap. Unless it's already built in. That's for me. It's just a leap that I won't take right now. But you saw our friend Mm -hmm. at the track, Santiago, who he yard sailed his V4. And he had his airbag. He wore his airbag. He didn't have a scratch on him. He He was. He was perfectly fine um and you know it's possible he would have been perfectly fine without the airbag and you and i have both crashed on track plenty of times where we don't need an airbag and we're fine but Mm -hmm. 
I like having that extra layer. I think especially on street, you know, the, the chances of you getting punctured or hit with something sharper or smaller through a rib or through a collarbone, oh, you know, like it just... Your bag of air is not going to help with the piercing. It actually does. Really? Yeah, it actually does with some of the piercing forces, and it just helps reduce some of those forces. Right. But it's mostly impact, for sure. Yes, it helps a ton. Impact, yeah. But piercing, yeah, if, you, if you have a nail, that's yeah. not going to help. <laughs> but, you know, I'm talking, I'm, what Mark I'm Jesus. thinking about is like a, a handlebar. You know, um, where it's like, it's not going to pierce necessarily, but it's a small localized it's force. It's going to hurt, hurt like a motherfucker, you know? Sure. And that's going to help disperse that force. And I started looking into it and, you know, I look at it this way. It was like 800 bucks for the street one. I think it was like a thousand for the track one because I got one of each. Because the street one, as you saw the other day, it doesn't really work with the track suit. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, it's just yeah. way too, I need the other one that's a little more track oriented. It's pricey, but I think about what would happen if I crash and like, I snap my collarbone or I break some ribs. Like, huh? You just get to sit like that for six months. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather just pay 100 bucks and not have to be like that for six months. It's fair. It's not nice. For me, all of my injuries have been to my lower extremities and they haven't made anything yeah. for that. If they did like an airbag for that, I'd probably do that before I did the one for the chest. So the, I don't know why. the airbag that I got, it goes all the way down to the hips, but it doesn't go to the legs. Yeah. They, yeah. I, they haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> There's not much you can do, but I I don't know. Um, again, I may just be stuck in my old ways. Yeah, it is cool to see, and I love the technology, and I love how they're putting it in such small packages. Yeah, to be used by riders because it is something. But for me personally, I I don't see myself making the jump at least within the near future. Yeah, within the you know following year. One so. thing I thought was cool is you know these airbag suits they tend to feel a little more lightweight than all the bulky padding because mm -hmm. they'll puff up when they're ready to use. When they're not ready to use, they just feel like cloth. They don't feel like much at all. Yeah. So I tried the track one on with my other, with my suit on. I was like, oh my God, it's like, it's nice because you don't have to run a back protector anymore. You just run that. You don't need a chest protector. You just run that. It's nice, you know? It's just a little, a little more movement. I like it. Yeah. I like feeling those things though. Yeah. You I feel, feel that. I feel naked without those yeah. things now. That's so uh, gone that's before. that old school feeling though I think. Yeah, you know? and I've gone out before where I've had a I borrowed someone's suit that had a back protector in it and coincidentally enough I forgot mine but because I didn't have that one that was pressing against my back yeah. I was like mm -mm. Yeah, I just came, right, I just came yeah. right back. Um then there was another time where I forgot my chest protector I was like mm -mm, I'm missing something here. Yeah. And I couldn't quite figure it out and just like, It's funny cuz I felt the same way with like my suit had the integrated back protector yeah. and it took me a while to get used to it where it's like I'm still my back is still protected, yeah. you know, but I was like, but I'm not wearing the whole thing. Yeah, I need the thing. I need, I need the thing, yeah. yeah. So it's it's a little weird. Um, I think you and I, rightfully so, like when we're on track, mostly because it's required, but also just because of like what we're doing, I take it super serious. Like mm -hmm. if I if I if I head out of pit and I don't have this buckled up, I'll just go right back out and buckle it up. I'm there's no way I'm taking that chance. Because yeah. we've both seen really gnarly shit at the racetrack. Mm -hmm. I saw a guy come off, his helmet came off. Yeah, his head looked like a strawberry. Not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, again, probably just stuck in our old ways. If they come out with something else new, you'd probably wait to see it, you know, type stuff. Yeah. I think I'm just a little slower than others in yeah. that fact. But it is weird how it changes over time because we look back on the lower levels of the gear that 90% of people that we see are wearing, and we're like, why don't you just do this? Just do this. But they're looking at it the same as me to you. Or you to the next guy. Yeah. And it starts to become of a mentality change. Because it does take a while to change that mentality for yourself. Like yeah. you're still getting used to wearing that in your suit. Mm -hmm. Whether it be on street or on track. Yeah. I It's going to take me a while to, to get used to it. And probably a season of doing it. And yeah. making sure I do it. Then it just becomes second nature. Yeah. But until you have that habit formed, it it sucks. Because you, you don't look at it the same. Yeah. But. And that's it's, it's hard for me to understand the guys that go out like we saw that guy today just no gear at all no yeah. helmet nothing the people that don't wear anything I definitely don't understand I don't I don't that. understand that. it's something just put something on the, a helmet at the bare minimum yeah. at least for me a three quarter helmet I hate half helmets yeah I know at least that's, a three quarter helmet yeah. at least a three quarter but you know it's hard to see there's there's a lot of guys on YouTube now yeah they'll go out and ride just just t shirts guns out they're trying mm -hmm. to look cool and I'm like damn man if you go down. You're not going to oh, look cool. You're not going to look cool. Yeah. yeah. 
You're going to be whinging. Yeah. You're going <laughs> to be. <laughs> you're going to look like ground beef. Yeah. It's not going to be cool. You're going to be yeah. sitting there spazzing out crying. Like yeah. Like a grown man. And no one wants to see that. No, no one wants to see that. I saw a video of a dude. He was riding a Harley and uh, he was just wearing a helmet, short shorts. It was a strange video. Nothing else. Helmet and short shorts. Oh. Like, I think it was a highway in Los Angeles or Las Vegas. I don't remember. How short were these shorts? Uh, pretty short. You oh. see a lot of man meat. Oh, okay. Good. So he gets up. He's trying to do like a stunt thing on his bike. Like he's going at least 70 miles per hour. Oh, I already see where this is going. Yeah. I see and where he, this and is going. he stands up on the bike and he's trying to ride like a surfboard or something. And this Harley just says, nah. Nah. <laughs> and it just goes like this and just tucks. And the camera turns around and you see him just like he falls and just starts spinning and like sliding on this concrete. I'm like, that dude's probably dead, honestly. Like, I mean, he's if, gonna wish that. Yeah, that's like, for sure. Just his his, dude, his stuff's just getting you're, vaporized. You're, on oh, the ground. man, you're gonna get rubbed raw, so deep. Oh, dude. She's gratered. Yeah, to a new level. Yeah. No, that's not fun. That's nah, not fun. I've seen a lot of videos like that. It's and rough. people, those same people, will go out with just like okay pants, and that's it. Yeah, just added one more thing. Dude, normal jeans just turn into tissue paper at those speeds. They don't do a goddamn thing. Mm -hmm. They don't do anything. People are like, oh, but I got thick denim. I'm like, denim, denim doesn't do it. <laughs> do you know how much friction there is at 60 miles per hour on asphalt? Have you just, just go lay down next to asphalt and see that yeah. it's not smooth. It is mm -hmm. not a, mm -hmm. you're getting, <laughs> you're you're che <laughs> it's a cheese grater. Yeah. It is a cheese grater. For sure. It's for sure. A cheese grater. Yeah. Here, at home test. Just take a cheese grater to your knee with <laughs> denim jeans on. It's, like, it's going to be worse than that. Yeah. Way worse. Yeah. See how quick your, that cheese grater gets through your jeans. That's yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, got to have that slide protection there for sure. But, yeah. Anything else you want to say about gear? Ah, dude. It's. Now, from, from what it's evolved to to what it is now, no. Not really. It's, again, I'm just stuck in my ways. But, yeah. I'm more curious to see about what gear you wear in, like, let's take it outside of the application that we do. We do a lot of road riding. Mm -hmm. What would you think? Cause we're not very experienced in it. What would you do for adventure riding esque stuff? Mm. Like, cause we don't have any mindset. So there's some people that are going to be the exact same levels that we are, but in their category, yeah, we may not enter at that level. One thing that I've always thought about are the motocross guys who they just, they go out, they have like the neck thing, the helmet, but then like, they're just wearing like a Jersey and there's just like, I, you there's nothing uh, and it's like you they wear boots and there's nothing else i'm like wow there's no padding there's like there's nothing so there for me because i i did do dirt for a little while for yeah, me i did too helmet no neck thing i don't like things around my neck <laughs> um gloves elbow pads knee pads because i know i'm going to fall <laughs> and one of those is going to hit the one pebble that's out there yes and it's gonna hurt yeah and then boots and yeah. obviously the pants and the jersey because yeah. the jer can't i want to take a quick caveat <laughs> why are those jerseys so expensive yeah <laughs> why are they hundreds of dollars That's a fair point for a jersey it's because they know they can make boo boo oh bucks on it because they make them look all cool and they're like you're gonna pay 150 yeah, dollars oh for my this yeah and of course we're like so expensive how much does that color <laughs> cost it's twice as much swipe my card <laughs> I yeah. Hate it. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. So for me, when it comes to like more adventure stuff or long distance stuff or any any other kind of category of riding, the first thing I think about is like my comfort level. Mm -hmm. Like people don't realize, but gear has to be comfortable. Like you can wear the most protective stuff if you can't operate the motorcycle. There's no point. Like yeah. you can't get the feel out of it. The first thing I look for is the feel in the gloves. Mm -hmm. I need to feel the throttle. I need to feel the brakes. Like. I need to have a really good connection to those. That's a good point. So you know those gloves that have the giant puck here and a giant puck here? I hate those things. Yeah. I'm okay with the three little small pucks. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. But not the that. big ones here. I hate those yeah. things. I'm use that's where I'm using my hand. Yeah. I'm holding it like this. That lever is going through right on that puck. Yeah. And that is not comfortable. You don't mm -hmm. get any feeling from that. I don't I I do understand why they put it there. Sliding. Yeah. I'm not sliding like this for that long <laughs> to justify needing yeah. a puck on my hand. I'm sorry. Yeah. I hate those gloves so my, much. My gloves that I wear on track, they're mostly kangaroo le leather on the palm <gasps> here. You killed a kangaroo? I didn't kill it. Somebody did. Oh. I didn't go out there and, you know, get them myself, but I would because I, I don't Shit. like kangaroos. I only kill cows. Yeah. But anyways... <laughs> <laughs> they're thin right and so you yeah. get a lot of feel but yeah. they, they don't last as long and i know that if you crash them it's like one crash you're done you can't keep crashing in kangaroo like that um well, actually but, no you can so my old 
Tai Chi had kangaroo. It, was it all kangaroo? Yeah. Oh, and you can keep crashing it. Yeah. Oh, I had cool. Like Ten crashes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, I always, sick. I always thought kangaroo would just. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. No, it's actually very uh, 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 abrasive resistant. It's, nice. It's actually very good. Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. Just so you know, for the, the one leather, just keep buying gloves. <laughs> the one, the one leather that I think is weird that they advertise sometimes. They're like, "Yeah, stingray leather," and I'm like, "What? The, That's so what extra! The it's like, so extra! Stingray! <laughs> it's so, got my made of crocodiles, so, buddy! Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? That's uh, so extra! Yeah. So well, yeah, like I was saying, the first thing I look for is that comfort. I want to make yeah. sure that I can use the gear and it feels good to ride in. And then from there, it's like temperature is a big consideration for me we live in one of the hottest states in the country so for me it's like whatever gear i'm wearing i mean i was complaining to you earlier today i was like i'm getting used to this airbag because it's hot you know <laughs> like hot. i'm wearing two jackets basically yeah, and you I, know and i get to take my jacket off you're taking your second taking jacket, second off. jacket <laughs> off yeah but i'm willing to do that for the protection it offers yeah. you know like we recently saw um that young man nigel who crashed his zx4 he was wearing all of his gear and you know that gear did a good job because all he walked away from that and impaling a tree being sore his shoulder hurt a little bit i was like dude you got super lucky yeah so the gear works 100 percent. and like just like bikes gear is if you want it to be good in something you're going to have to sacrifice in something else Mm -hmm. you are sacrificing your comfort Mm -hmm. for more protection yep I'm not willing to make that sacrifice right now. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I technically will whenever I get a leather jacket. I'll yeah. probably end up wearing that most of the time mm-hmm. and I'll sacrifice comfort for protection. Yeah. So it's always a give and take. It's something is not going to be until they, if someone makes it perfect in all of those categories, yeah. they're going to make some money. But yeah, until then, someone can make like a paper thin airbag system, it's like, wow, you're that about to breathes be, really you know, well. That's and breathable and abrasive. perforated yeah. and, and it is abrasive yeah. or, or like when you go down, it hard up or something because yeah. it signals like an electrical and chain and then that somehow activates. it's water resistant yeah like, like, <laughs> you're like so. if it does all that it will give you cancer it'll just have like asbestos in it and just like kill you or whatever health benefits go down <laughs> yeah but the comfort and the protection. environmental <laughs> catastrophes go way up but yeah. this is really good material <laughs> <laughs> weapons grade yeah, stuff with, military grade with that type of stuff yeah yeah what do you what do you not wear in certain circumstances so let's what do say I not wear obviously there's gloves all different lines of gloves so for our purposes street riding yeah what do you if someone came up to you were like i have this gear and immediately looking at that gear you would say absolutely not what is that gear for me on street i, I think gauntlet gloves or crazy overkill and i just they, overkill. they limit my mobility a lot mm-hmm. I, ju- I just don't like the way they work i don't i don't like gauntlet gloves on the street for personally me, so glow we can do this category by category but for gloves if you're wearing like dirt gloves oh, or no, like yeah. walmart work gloves no, 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 as no. your gloves crazy absolutely not no, no no the no. minimum i need to see is like the uh the leather one that goes right here you just mm-hmm. like pull it to make it tight right here that's the bare minimum yeah that i that for me, I need to see or have to to ride yeah. on the street for me. For me, the boots are a big one. Uh, mm-hmm. And you've seen, I always wear the SMX V2s. Yeah. I, that, I like having a big proper boot. Mm-hmm. I feel really weird wearing just like like the ones you have, the smaller just yeah. ankle resistant one or just like sneakers. So for me, it's like, I got to have the boot. Like, yeah. I can't do no boot. For me, I just... I f- my boots are a bit loud and a bit extra to be wearing on the street. <laughs> they do match Look, my I'll, bike now, though. I was just about to they say. match my bike. So you're big on matchy-matchy. So if you get some orange gear, you I will just, do it. I did buy those orange shoes for that. Mm-hmm. I did do that. I was like, bike, shoot, done. <laughs> That's why I got the wallet. I'm going to get the Cardo. You're getting the KTM Cardo. I can't We're wait done. to see that in person. I'm like, oh my God. You'll probably be like, all right, it's pretty cool. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Hold on. Just, be, just in case the viewers don't believe me. He has an orange wallet. I it's, got... <laughs> it's ridiculous. And he, you showed me the orange shoes that he bought. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, one I'm not a simp, bro. I'm yeah. t- I've been telling you, I'm not a simp. You were talking about this earlier, <laughs> but for me also, um, the half helmet, quarter mm-hmm. helmet, but yeah. all that bullshit, no. It's a full face or nothing for me, personally. For, so I'm looking at the, the scooter squid people. Mm-hmm. Three quarters, okay. But that's fair. I don't know why on a scooter it feels okay. It feels okay. <laughs> it, it, you're like, I'll be all right. It's fine. <laughs> but beyond that, if no matter what, if you're a beginner starting to ride, I don't care what bike you're on. God, I have a friend face. that wears a full face helmet on his cruiser. Wear freaking full face. It's a full because face. Because guess what? 
you can hear your music better anyways. Yeah. Put a Cardo system in there, or so whatever system you want to put in there. It's quieter. You just, no bugs are getting in your face. It's just did you better. did you start using a Cardo when you worked here? You didn't use them before, right? Uh, well, did you? We used Cardos before. Yeah. Oh, okay, the cool. old old Cardos, the old ones. No, yeah, I never bought one. And I used to sell them when I used to work. Uh, oh yeah, nice. Yeah. But I, for me, when I first put one inside of my helmet, it was like I was blown away. I was like, this is so cool. Yeah, I could talk to my buddies and I could like listen to music. It's I was way like, better instead of this is. Bit, we've had it at the track. We're just like. <laughs> yeah, just screaming at each other. Just, just random people are like, why are they yelling yeah. so loud? They can't right hear. There. Yeah, can't hear shit. Both wearing earplugs, bikes loud, mm -hmm. just yelling for no reason. Oh, well, yeah. speaking of gear, that's one total non-negotiable for me is earplugs. So mine didn't used to be on the street until recently. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe because I have the custom ones. But for some reason, those foam push-in ones, either, either they're too deep for me or not deep enough. Mm. You know, so I got mine custom and I, I love them. Yeah. I have my pink set that I use mostly for street riding, which are a little looser than I preferably like, which is why I have my tighter ones for racing. Yeah. Cause I want that tight fit. I want it to, you know, I want only that noise getting mm -hmm. in basically. So, yeah. What's cool about earplugs and people think it's like, Oh, you won't be able to hear anything. It's like, you can hear a lot. You can hear most. Once things. you get used to it at first. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely. You probably can't hear anything because you're not used to it. Yeah. But after you get used to reading people's body language and the reading their lips and stuff like that, I can wear them all day long yeah. and talk just fine. Mm -hmm. Race cars can be going by or stuff like that. I can still have a conversation with you yeah. because I'm used to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually really like the feeling of like dampening all the sound. Mm -hmm. It's nice. Just all of it. Just, yeah, oh, everything just now. goes down. Everything's quiet. Yeah. yeah. It's like a noise canceling headphone. Mm -hmm. It gets you in the zone. Yeah. I, I like it. Brandon, anything else on gear? I think we've covered I most think, of I it. I think we covered most of yeah. it. I think we're pretty good on gear. The long and the short of it, guys, is wear gear. Wear uh, your gear. Preferably buy it on <laughs> yammynoob.co. We sell a bunch of great gear, but um, even if you don't, just wear some good gear and I will love you. But if you're out there riding no helmet, being doing dumb stuff, like we saw earlier, t yeah, tiss, tiss. Don't be doing yeah, that. Don't know. Yeah. So with all that being said, let's move into the final portion of the podcast, the call in section where hopefully somebody calls in. I don't know. We haven't done this in a while. So let's see. Please call. <laughs> Please call. All righty, folks. Welcome to the final portion of the podcast. I have dropped a phone number on discord and I'm having people call me. We're going to chat here. So this is an experimental last bit of the podcast here. Uh, we shall see uh, who we get and what they and what they want. What, the, what kind of what questions they have from me. What do you want? <laughs> What? Oh, look at that. We got a we got a we got a guy here. Hello, this is Father Yam. Oh, am I am I speaking to you right now? You are, yes. Okay. <laughs> it sounded like an automated voice message. Oh, that's funny, yeah. I should have just I should have just leaned into that. I just kept being yeah, like, just... You've reached the voicemail <laughs> box of No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're on. How's it going, man? You said your name was David? Yeah. It's going great. I was uh just watching the V four R giveaway and it was uh I was 2,000 entries away from the winning spot. Were you really? Was that was that you up or down on the Ducati giveaway? Well, because above was like 50-50, and then I was um, one of the people above there. Oh, wow. But so close. I would have picked up the Ducati already. I would have been up there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you live in Austin. Yeah, you would have you just shown up and be like, I'm ready to collect it. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> but, um, what was I going to say? It was like uh, it was like Las Vegas gambling. Like they give you the uh, you do the uh, the the roulette spin or what is it? I don't I don't know what it is. The slot machines and it's like X X win win and then you lose. Yeah. So it was like oh super close. <laughs> Gotta gamble again. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do it again. Gotta hit him again. Slot it again. Yeah. So maybe the uh, the MT07. Like, maybe I'll get that next. Time. Yeah. Two, two winners. Maybe. Two winners. Uh, two chances to win. Uh, what do you ride right now? Right now, I have the uh, a CB three hundred R. I posted okay. a photo in the uh, in the Discord, and I I had the bike in front of my TV when I was watching. Where did you post it on the Discord? I'll take a look. Uh, just in the giveaway uh, bike discussion. If you want, it's a pretty funny photo. <laughs> I was uh, sitting on the bike watching the stream. I was like, right, you got to manifest it. You know? <laughs> I'm scrolling up. I not. Let's see here. There's a lot of, a lot of chat. There is a lot of chat here. A lot of chat on the Discord. <laughs> SpongeBob memes. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Just directly in front of your TV. Oh, it might be, uh, not safe for work. Sorry, I forgot about that. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we can blur if we need. 
That's a good setup, though. Yeah, just big ass Ducati V four R bike, and uh, and yeah, that poster in the background. <laughs> cool, man. Well, happy to talk to a fellow Austin boy. Uh, while I got you on the phone, you got any questions? You got anything you wanna you wanna shout out? You're on the you're on the horn, so you're being immortalized on the Amcast. No, I appreciate it. Um, no, I uh, appreciate the giveaway, though. It was fun. It was an enjoyable experience. Awesome. It was my first giveaway that I uh, entered myself into. Oh, and you were so oh. close. It was really close, yeah. Well, better luck next time, man. Uh, the MT-07 should have pretty good odds since there's two of them up for grabs, so fingers crossed for you. Yeah, it was nice talking to you. All right. Thanks, man. Later. All right, chatted with David here, a local Austin boy. What a guy. That would have been so funny if we did have a local guy come through and win. He was just like, I'm here to collect. He's just like, <laughs> and the winner is, he just, <laughs> go on your door. He's here. <laughs> hey, we get to stream this, too. He's here. All right, we didn't plan that at all. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got another call here. Hello, Cragen. You are on the Yamcast. How you doing? Holy I'm great. You said my name right for the first time. Because you said it right before, because it, it, when I picked yeah. up the phone, it said, Cragen is on the line. I was like, nice. <laughs> nice. Got it. I usually call you uh, Cragon, don't I? <laughs> oh, yeah. You, yeah. Pretty much everybody. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's quite all right. So, looking to move on from the 400, probably next riding season. Um, I'm stubborn as hell. Going to try to get a 600 class or a leader class bike. Uh being that most of those things are ridden harder than a uh, what would you say that I need to look for the most uh, when I'm checking them out? Any any telltale signs right when I get up to the bike? Wow, sorry. My, my head was just spinning with that allegory you just dropped in there about the female police officer. Um, that was insane. Um, well, I've got an English degree and I teach PE. I've got to use it somewhere. I like it. I like it. Um, so if you're looking at a used 600, first of all, you're going to want to see if it was used for, like, um, track duty. Um, I think that's the first sign of maybe, like, some hard life and hard abuse. But weirdly enough, sometimes track bikes are the most well-taken-care-of bikes, too, yeah. honestly. They they're ridden hard, but they're also taken care of. Yeah, like, they're, they're ridden super aggressively, but then people really like them, too. So it can kind of be this catch-22 where sometimes you find a street bike, like, oh, it was never tracked, but then, like, the dude left it outside, and it was kind of messed up. So here's where I would start. I would start looking at the tires. The tire's going to tell you a lot about how this bike lived. Um, if you see burnout marks and super aggressive marks on the side of the tires, you know it was ridden super hard. The second thing I'd look at would be the chain. Uh, chain life tells you a lot about how a motorcycle was cared for. Yes. Um, if it's rusty, if it's, you know, kind of like, you know, just sitting around outside, that's not good. Uh, Brandon, anything else? Uh, Cragen uh, should look for you know, If it's super tight, they obviously don't know what they're looking like maintenance wise. You know, if that chain is super, super tight, they don't know how to maintenance it. Um, look for scratch marks on the frame because if it definitely went down if the scratch marks on the frame because you mm -hmm. can't hide that. If you see like Sharpie marks, them trying to hide it, you know it went down at some point. And then you ask them if they say no, you know they lied, just walk away. Um, other than that, that's that's all I'd check for is mainly frame and make sure that, that rear tire is straight because that yeah. tells you if that swing arm's bent or even if the frame is tweaked. Got it. I will keep that in mind. I don't know why you had Brandon on there. The guy never even won a moto. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So aggressive. Burn. So aggressive. Burn. <laughs> I love you, Brandon. That was uncalled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy didn't even know how to ride. Why yeah. is he here? I'm new. I don't even know what you're talking about. This guy sucks. What is Moto America? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Got to roast the new guy. <laughs> the brotherhood. Yeah. Well, cool, Craigon. I hope that helps you. I called you Craigon again. What? Yeah. It's Craigon. I'm so sorry. God, it's how just dare you? Phonet Will you teach English? Is it phonetically wrong for me to say that? I don't even know. Ah, who cares? I'm, it doesn't matter. Okay. I'll get to ride anyway. Cool. <laughs> well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate you calling. Yep. Have a good one. Later. So aggressive. Yeah, he didn't like you. <laughs> oh, got another call right here. So sad. Ceviche, you are on the Yamcast. How you doing? Hey, Papa Yam, long time no uh, calling uh, over there. How's it going? It's going good. Yeah, I remember you popped by the the pop up giveaway. I remember you had the uh, you had the MTO seven, right? Is that what you had? I, I I used to man. I sold it. Yeah. What do you want now? Yeah, and I mean uh, the two legs. <laughs> <laughs> two legs. <laughs> I mean something. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't have a bike right now. I uh, I think it's the worst decision 
I ever made in my life because I miss that bike so much. You're we talking about that, but, yeah. Um, you know, I'm hanging there. You know, I have my, you know, my vehicle, and you know, waiting for a good opportunity to um, uh, buy another bike. But but it's going great, man. How about yourself? We're good, yeah. Um, obviously, I have a lot of bikes, so my bike life is well and sorted. I'm very happy about that. Um, I was telling Brandon because he just got a Super Duke. I miss having a, a super fast street bike. I think I might get the Turbo Busa back in back in action here in 2024. Because um, Brandon needs to ride a force induction motorcycle. It's very important for his <laughs> development as a rider because he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, but yeah, going good, man. Do you have a, a question for us or something you want to bring up? Yeah, I mean, well, uh, back though, uh, back in the day. Uh, of that uh, tour of booth, uh, I enjoyed the the content that you guys made and Jigs Bro and all that. I I did enjoy that very much. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that you don't have that bike. I, old I, I, I have some footage. I have some videos uh, of the the visit that I made you guys on the old uh, uh, headquarters over there in Austin, and it was pretty dope. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. You should resurrect it back, man. Uh, it, it's a pretty uh, you know cool bike, so you can you know ride with a uh, Brenda's, uh, new super Duke. Yeah, it's true. I can't keep up. Otherwise we've proved that today. So yes. I need something fast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just going in to, you know, uh, you know, uh, congratulate you for your, uh, hundred, uh, episode milestone. And, uh, actually, uh, I'm going to get back to the saddle in like two weeks now. Uh, we're having a motor trip to the back of the dragon to Virginia. And it's good. It, it, it's been a while the last time I, I, I rode a motorcycle. It's like uh, I saw my bike in February this year, so uh, I'm already prepared. Uh, since you guys have uh, been talking uh, about gear, and you know, uh, I bought some, you know, uh, riding pants with Aramid, uh you know, uh, and reinforcement uh, about about an action cam. So I'm gonna, you know, uh, try and do some footage, like motor blocks or something. Uh, super pretty interesting. And yeah, I, I, I wanted to ask you, um, uh, being that I'm uh, out of the uh, motorcycle uh, for a very long time, and I, I you tend to lose like you know like that uh, uh, you know like the freedom and you know the uh, the you used to the bike. You know what I mean. So uh, what what is your takeaway uh, to you know doing this road trip? Uh, uh, being um, like uh, away from the bike for, for too long. I would say since you haven't been on the bike for a long time, uh, when you jump on, you're going to have to remember how to be kind of very situationally aware. That's the biggest thing about riding a bike, right? Is just knowing your surroundings, knowing who's coming up behind you, knowing what's going on. Um, that's the kind of thing that I feel like if you're not riding regularly, you kind of tend to lose touch with. You know, the the actual riding component, the the clutch, the brakes, the throttle, all that stuff, that's, that's muscle memory. You'll jump back on and that'll all work fine. But I think right. getting yourself mentally prepared to be like, all right, like, got to make sure I don't run this red light because I might die, you know? Um, that's a, that's a yeah, big, too, that's yeah. a big mental change from, from driving a car. There's also the, the fact that like, you know, if you're doing such a big trip like that, you know, definitely pace yourself. You don't have to do 900 miles in a day. You can, you know, take it easy, ride a, a good amount of time, um, and have fun. That's what I would recommend. Brandon, yeah. any recommendations? That's not my expertise. That's right. <laughs> He's never ridden long, so he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, Brenda's just like tweeting, you know, I'll run the Tuesdays, that's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so but the, the, the thing that we're going to do is, like, we're going to uh, drive, uh, you know, with the motorcycles uh, in a pickup truck, like in a trailer. We're going to put, like, a, around five bikes on the back of them. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, drive, you know, on to, uh, I think it's, uh, it's Tazewell or Tazewell, Virginia. That's where the back of the dragon is. And, you know, we're going to stay over there, you know, renting an Airbnb and all that. And then we're, you know, we're just going to ride, you know, uh, all the way back and forth and, you know, enjoy the ride. Uh, so it's going it's, it's to be a really, you know, interesting trip for me. Uh, I, I don't know if it that counts, but uh, I did like a few, you know, laps around uh, a parking lot in a Yamaha X-Max. That's a scooter. Nice. Uh, that counts. It absolutely counts. The X-Max is goaded. Right, I love that bike. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was off it. I, I felt like, man... I really need to get back in two wheels, man. I really miss it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, Ceviche, good luck on the trip. That sounds awesome. I'm going to open up the lines here a little bit, but thank you for calling, man. I appreciate it. Yes, man. I'm going to put some uh, pictures on the Discord, so uh, good luck to you guys, and I'll see you later. All right, later, bro. 
Yeah, we got to do a big trip like that one day. That'll be fun. Get a get a hyper motor or a hyper naked. Sorry. Yeah. Or a hyper motor. Either, either way. Yeah. yeah. Either one. Yeah. I was like, I'll do that. Either it's fine with me. All right. We got another guy calling here. Squid Nut, you are on the Yamcast. How you doing? Hello, Father Noob. It is I, the Holy Peanut, also known as Squid Nut. Uh, did, did you did you anger Brandon at some point? He he just looks very upset that we're talking to you. <laughs> did you talk to him on Discord? Is I, it... <laughs> it is because I bring forth to you one message and one question. Oh, gosh. Okay, what's up? My child shall soon be upon you, Father Noob, and his beauty is immeasurable. And Brandon nearly went blind from seeing him. The shirt. Oh, the shirt. <laughs> nice. I haven't I haven't seen it, but I'm Why gonna set it. <laughs> I haven't shown him yet. <laughs> will most definitely love it. Oh, you gosh. may be blinded. I'm excited. For how beautiful my child is. He hasn't he hasn't but shown me have... the, the photo, so I'm excited. Yeah, I do have one question for you though. Yes. So I wanna get into track. Uh huh. But in the non existence that is Indiana. They don't really have track days. Like, they have track that you yeah. can go and ride on, but they don't have coaches to really teach you, which is what I'm looking for. I'd have to go to a nearby state for that. Do you think I should, before going to track just to ride around, I should get coached around on how to do it first? Or I can just kind of start on the tracks in Indiana without fully knowing what I'm doing yet? I think it's possible to start on the tracks without fully knowing, like you were saying, because you can find a lot of instruction online and do courses online and, and kind of just get your basics down through that. Obviously, having a coach teaching you day of will be better, but I do think it's possible. Um, Brandon, you want to weigh in a little bit? I Personally, I do not believe in going to get a coach day one because you get very dependent on getting something from somebody learning-wise. Um, mm -hmm. it's going to be a learning experience for you no matter what. So just go out there and ride how you would ride. And then you just push one thing at a time. You try, you want to change something. I, I teach this with, uh, yams over here. When we go to the track, go out there and change something. Don't do the same thing over and over again. Don't let that habit okay. form. And once you figure out whatever works, you piece that together as one whole lap. And you see where it is because it's all personal preference. What's comfortable for you may not be comfortable for me. So why is my word the one that you're going to go off of? Basically, that's why I don't like coaches. Okay, <clears throat> that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, one of my biggest fears is I feel like if I get on track, I'll get the sense of oh, I'm on track, so I can kind of push myself as hard mm -hmm. as I can, and then end up being a doofus and like wrecking my first track day, which is something I want to avoid. It's possible, but to be honest, you'll probably ride somewhat within limits because like your bike, your bike's limits are much higher than yours right yeah. now, and so it's probably likely you'll stay within them. Again, like you said, you could do like a super doofus move and just like grab a fistful of brakes mid corner it or happens. ride off the track. It that that happens. does happen for sure, but pretty unlikely. Most guys go to the first track; they're, they're totally fine. Yep. Okay, I'm not really too scared of it. I'm just like, I don't want to want inconvenience other riders, and to mostly break the bike because I do not have money to really <laughs> break my bike and yeah. keep doing track days. No, I, I get you. No, nobody wants that. That that always sucks. We had a guy, uh, one of our tracks we know, he yard sailed a Panigale V4, a Ducati. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Was, we were all very sad for him. Uh, he, he was he the least sad. sad. He was the least he sad. He wasn't sad because <laughs> ostensibly he could afford to repair the whole thing. But yeah, to your point, you yeah. don't want to see that. Yeah. Hey man, good luck with your uh, your track day excursions. Let us know how it goes in the Discord. Yeah, post picks. All right, thank you so much. Later, bud. Oh, this is going well. Look at this. Yeah. People calling, having fun. We got to figure out a better way than me just holding my phone. I'm sure I'll figure. Oh. <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> well, isn't your title is production logistics manager, isn't it? That sounds like a a Brandon a thing. production thing. It doesn't <laughs> sound like a production issue. <laughs> it sounds like your problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we um, go. Hello there, you are on the Yamcast. I believe it was Jonathan that was on the call? Yeah, and I'm getting a little bit of a headache because there's a delay between uh, YouTube and the phone. <laughs> Maybe turn off YouTube and just listen to the sweet sound of my voice through your phone. Maybe that'll work better. But then well, how can I switch between? I'm trying to, to be him? productive in, in the moment, but I was just going to say uh, I enjoy your guys' content. I've been a fan for like a couple years now since I was in Dutch Harbor. I don't own a bike at the moment. 
Because, <gasps> um, you know, when you live on an island in the middle of the yep. Pacific, you don't really have space to do anything. That is challenging, uh, yeah. I was curious. Yeah, I was curious what, because I know you said a good start bike would be a dual sport. Do you still think that's a good starting place? Yes, I think an entry-level dual sport, a WR250, a KLX300, a CRF300L, super cool place to start your motorcycle journey because you don't, if, if you don't know what kind of riding you want to do, those bikes are awesome because you can explore dirt, you can explore you can street, everything. you can yeah. do anything, yeah, which is really cool. Um, so that's, I definitely still recommend those for sure. Okay, got it. Yeah, because I have a friend that does dirt bikes and he's like, you should do a dual sport, but I have a girlfriend that's like, I really like the Sons of Anarchy, and we should get one of those bikes. I'm like, that sounds terrible. Yes, okay. those things weigh a bajillion pounds. Yeah, those things are heavy. <laughs> they they don't do anything particularly well, and they are not Yammy approved. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I told her to look at a Honda Rebel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's that? I'm like, oh dear lord. <laughs> Yeah, show her the light, show her the way. Dual sports are, are a ton of fun. Uh, I, I miss my WR250R quite dearly. That was a sweet motorcycle. Got it. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome, like man. I said, I've been a fan for several years, so keep at it, my dude. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for calling. All right, folks. I think we have time for one more, maybe. So we'll see if someone calls in here. Um, have you ridden a dual sport or just like enduro or motocross bikes? Just enduro. Dude, dual yeah. sports are cool. Like my my husky is technically a dual sport. You gotta ride that thing sometime. I'm gonna get the super wait, moto wheels yeah, on. I wanna it. Get, have to do super moto stuff. Yeah, I can show you how to do dank skids, bro. Dude, I'm telling you that thing. <laughs> it's stupid what it can do. Power wheel is in fourth gear. It's amazing. Oh, that's one thing you didn't do today was wheelie the. Duke. I, you're right. I didn't do that. You because you, you we, were, like, we were so many twisties. I was like, where am I gonna wheelie? You, you're thing? like, mate, let's make sure it's on. Yeah, <laughs> we got a call. Hello, you are on the Yamcast. Who are we speaking with? This is CJ. What's up? CJ. What's up, man? Good to talk to you. I think you've been trying to call here for a little bit. Sorry, the, the lines have been a little busy. All good. All good. Uh, I actually had a question about uh, vest technology since you uh, you just let us know that you have already invested. I wondered, if, assuming you've done plenty of research before you ended up making your purchase, I was just curious if you had something to talk about that. There's a couple of options out there these days. Yeah, so I kind of went with the uh, the tried and true, the Alpine Stars unit. Uh, from what I saw online, that's the most advanced and good one. Sorry, Brandon's just staring <laughs> at me in a really stupid way. Um, and uh, yeah, like I mean, the, there's a reason why most guys on the MotoGP grid are using the Alpine Stars system. It's it's the tried and true one. It's the best. They have the best technology, the best algorithm uh, for determining if you've been in a crash or not. Because that's the big thing, right? When you're buying the airbag system, you're buying mostly software and some hardware, but it's really the software that's going to help determine where you're crashing, how you're crashing. Um, and you're getting that overall area of protection with it as well. So yeah, I, I, I sat on it. I sat on the decision for a while, honestly, like a good three months. And then I was having a conversation with my wife and I was like, man, this is just like a really good safety thing. Um, you know, I pride myself on knowing how to ride, use my brakes when I'm trailing and all that stuff on street. But dude, someone could just rear end you and make you have a really bad day. So I want to make sure that I, I stay safe, you know? Uh, and, and one other question, when the CF Moto... 675 triple comes out will there be a track with that in your daytona 100 percent. i gotta make chinese daytona memes dude i have to oh um God. and i just have to see what it's all about i mean what how often do we get a new triple cylinder sport bike never I, never I'm there's a reason for that for there's a reason We're, for that let's compare them all to their predecessors. we're here for it brandon it's, it's just the two of you. It's just the two of you. We're in love. <laughs> and you it's can't stop us. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. I'll be there watching the content. You guys are awesome. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate all the stuff you guys are putting out. Keep it up. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Why are you so violent? Look at all this love. You're about to punch me. I love that so I violent. didn't punch you. And you went, ow. <laughs> <laughs> I think it even hit you. This poor guy. There's a guy called Adam that keeps trying to call. And he just can't get through. Do we do we take his call? Let's just call him back. Let's call him my personal <laughs> <laughs> your personal number. Yeah, uh, I want to see if Adam can try this call us one more time. He has been trying a lot, so I, I will try to wait on Adam here. Um, we got to get you in an airbag suit. See what you like. I, I, yeah, you know it's, it's gonna take something yeah. to be like, 
Okay, I, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. I see the technology all the time. I see the MotoGP riders fly through the air and it's okay. inflated and they don't die. Yeah. Cool. But I also watch the old 500cc two stroke days and they fly through the air and don't die. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> they, or they, they have back protectors either. They have life altering injuries like a lot of them did. But they're men. Those are men. I'd rather not be a man and be able to walk. I'm just saying. You know, you you just okay. <laughs> but do you want to get that sticker? Um, I've seen it on like shipbox cards. It's like no airbags. We die like men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems like it fits. Yeah. Alrighty, folks. I was waiting on this one gentleman to call because he tried so many times, but I think we've run out of time. Um, the call-in was super fun, though. Thank you yeah. so much, for everyone, who called. We definitely want to do this again because this adds a lot of spice to the the podcast. Um, I also just realized I got to turn off that Google voice number, otherwise people are going to keep calling me the rest of the day. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you had some fun live here for about an hour and a half. Remember, uh, for all the folks out there on YouTube who later are going to watch this and uh, want to join the fun, join on Yammy New Back Ho, become a member, join the Discord. It's a ton of fun. I really appreciate everyone who's become a member. Uh, and thank you so much. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Wake up. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. None of this is real. None of it's real. None of it's real. Wake up. Keep watching Amy Noob.